God's gonna trouble the water. Wait in the water. Wait in the water, children. Wait in the water. God's gonna trouble the water. <laughs> I learned that song from my grandmother. And when I was a little girl, I asked my grandmama, where you learn that song? And she said from her mother, who learned it from her mother. My second great grandmama. I'd like to tell you a story about my great great grandmother, Ellen Craft. She was born in 1826. Matter of fact, it was August near Macon, Georgia. My grandmama said that those was desperate times in our nation's history if your skin was uh, dark. But as a matter of fact, her skin wasn't that dark. But that's part of the story that my grandmama told me about her grandmama and of course her grandfather, which would make him my great-grandfather or great-great-grandfather, William. She said that Ellen and William were desperate to escape the chains of slavery. Come on, follow me. And let's start the story in Macon, Georgia, October 1837, on the Smith Plantation. Ellen was 11. The plantation owner, Major James Smith, and his wife Ethel, uh, as usual, were having a bit of a misunderstanding. James, you've got to do something about that child. What child are you talking about? Surely there is a passel of children running around. You know very well what child I'd be referring to. Ethel, I'm not going to be playing no games with you. If you've got something to say to me, just blurt it out like you always do. That child, Ellen. Oh. Are we going to dig up all that again? There ain't nothing to dig up. How are you going to dig up something that's never been buried? So I suppose the game you want to play then is a ring around the roses. The game you've been playing is beating around the bush. <laughs> Bushes you've been hiding in for Lord knows how long. Yeah, but we have gone over this time and time again. I mean, when you saw that baby, the black man... And that child's been a thorn in my flesh ever since. That was nearly ten years ago. To be more precise, it's been 11 years old, and I'm tired of it. I don't see what's changed. What's changed is the child keeps growing. Of course the child is growing. It ain't that she be growing. It's just she, she looks so much like our children that they keep referring to her as my child. Well, it's no wonder she looks white. Her mama was a mulatto. I mean, that means that she is more white than black. Do you know good and well that one drop of black blood makes her Negro? Also in the eyes of the Lord. Well, if the gospel truth be known... There ain't nothing gospel about it. She may be your child, but she's certainly not mine. Folks continue to tell me how much she looks like you, her daddy. What is it you propose? I'm not proposing anything. I'm telling you, you got to sell her. There's an autumn auction coming up. Ethel, how cruel can you be? You should have thought about the ramifications of that when Even you Even though she was born of a slave, she is still and my And sired by the slave owner. Well, we just can't toss her out. I mean, she's now like one of the family. Even our old children play with her. Oh, yes. They all play together like sisters. And that's the problem. Whenever we have somebody come visit from somewhere else, they keep referring to her as my child. And then I have to explain the whole rock mess all over again. Well, it's not like it's all that unusual for a plantation owner to... Oh, no, that's right. But speaking of owning, she may not be my child, but she is my property, as well as she is yours. And don't forget, as long as we're married and living on the land left to be my my parents, that what fruit the plantation tree drops belongs to you as much as to me. And of course, I could have consigned it to the auctioneer block, 
without informing you until the deed was accomplished. You wouldn't dare. As long as I am the head of this family, I have the right to engage in whatever auction action or no sale action I please. You should have thought about that before you engaged in some unfortunate... And I could engage again by preventing this action that you are suggesting. I'm not suggesting anything. I'm telling you that if you don't listen to what I'm saying, you might as well take all your family business to the slave shanties where you all been times before. She is ours to do with what as we please. Oh yes, as someone else put it, slaves are only chattel property. Well, I'm not your chattel property. Now, the question is, what do you hope to do with your, our property? Well, rather than sell her, we could give her away. Make a present of her? Well, now that Mary is married, she could use some help. Hell, she's probably pregnant already. But they've been growing up together and playing together like sisters. They are. Don't be reminding me again. You may have a real good solution. On Mary's birthday, coming up soon. A sister given to a sister. Now it'll be master and slave. Mistress and slave. Yeah, I suppose. Well, it's decided then. That's what we'll do for next month. Nine years later, Ellen and Mary were in the yard. Ellen, as usual, was hanging clothes. I believe you have a birthday approaching. <laughs> yes. In a couple of weeks. Yeah, I believe you'll be quite 20 then. What ordinarily happens when a person turns 20? Well, when a, when a white girl turns 20, her mother and father give her things for her hope chest. What if the person doesn't have a father? No chest. Certainly no hope. You know very well what I mean by, by person. Of course, means a free person. What you mean is a white person. Oh, you know very well that's the same thing. <laughs> Although I can't read nor write, I listen to the white folks when they talk politics. They count us slaves as only a part of a person, but not person enough to vote or have any other rights. You be listening. That's not all I be hearing. What else you be hearing? That when my daddy, also your daddy, could have sold me on the auction block, he decided instead to give me to you. Well, yes, and that's the way it ought to be. When a person owns property, they can dispose of it any way they see fit. And Daddy didn't see fit to sell me, but instead decided to give me to my own sister. Yes, and Ellen, you ought to be grateful to me and Robert. You know what it could have been if Daddy sold you to another planter. We treat you pretty decent, don't we? Oh, yes. And I'll be grateful that Daddy didn't sell me, but it still doesn't seem right to be owned by your own sister. But as I was saying... And I... you and Matt Roberts can put me on the auction block any time you choose. Now, Ellen, that's enough. What Robert and I want to do or have to do is up to us. And we don't need to discuss it any further with nobody. That's the way it started. Ellen and William were born in different townships in the state of Georgia. William's old master had the reputation of being a very caring Christian man. But he thought nothing of selling William's father and aged mother at separate times to different persons to be dragged off never to behold each other again. The reason he had disposed of the parents in such a way is that they were getting old and would soon have no value on the market. Therefore, he intended to sell off all of his old stock and buy a young lot. A most disgraceful conclusion for a man to come to who made such great professions of religion. William's old master then apprenticed William to a cabinet maker. My grandma told me that if a slave had a good trade, he would sell for more than a slave without a trade. So many slaveholders would uh, have their slaves take trade lessons on that account. But before William's time had expired, his old master wanted money. So he had the auctioneer sell him and his sister. What am I bid for this young girl? 
Folks, she's a good investment. Just look at her. Just coming to age, hale and hearty and ready for years and years of good labor, whether in the cotton fields or scrubbing down your household or laboring with birthing. And I believe she already be a fine cook. And boys, let me tell you, what a heifer shall be ready to drop a barn full of new calves. So, what do I hear now? Who'll start the bidding at the $20 so that everybody can get in? Do I get $20? I get $20. Do I get $25? I get $22. Somebody wants to get in at $21? Of course, she was sold to the highest bidder. He was another planter, but lived quite a ways in the country, miles away from Macon. William was next to be sold. Master, sir, can we wait for a little while? We ain't never been apart before, and she my little sister. I sure she's scared. Mama and Papa done already been sold to different folk, and we used to be family. Please, please, just let me say goodbye to my little sister. Get up! Damn it! Get up! <laughs> William saw the cart where his sister moved off slowly. He never saw her again. William was knocked down to the cashier of the bank where they were mortgaged and he was ordered to the cabinet shop where he previously worked. Well, they were only slaves and they had no legal rights. In Georgia, a slave is one who is in the power of a master to whom he belongs. The master may sell him, dispose of his person, his industry, and his labor. He can do nothing, possess nothing, nor acquire anything but what must belong to his master. But my grandma told me that William being a cabinet maker, he was able to keep 10% of what he was paid for his work. It is unlawful for anyone of purely European descent to intermarry with a person of African extraction. Though a white man may bed as many colored women as he pleases, and it was common practice for white men to be the father of children from those slaves, there was no damage to his reputation in his white community or even in his white church. The more pious and beautiful the girl, the greater the price, and to be used for whatever the owner's purpose was. But Grandma said that Ellen and William's story was a bit different. They were allowed to marry, as she was back on the plantation of her father, and he had bought William at the auction. Their wedding was a quiet and simple affair. It was early evening, just before dark, on the Plantation Manor House porch. James, Ethel, and their pastor, Brother Hicks, were seated on the porch. James, didn't you say that there was going to be a, a wedding here this evening? Yes, for a couple of our slaves. They should be here any minute. You know how unreliable they can be. Ah, well, here they are now. I assume these are the slaves you mentioned? Yes. The names are William and Ellen. Now, we might as well get on with it. James, is it your wish that these two slaves get married in a Christian wedding? It can't hardly be Christian since they both be Negroes and slaves as well. Why, Sister Ethel, I failed to... And Ask your permission in this marriage union. That's all right, Reverend Hicks. I get left out quite often when it comes to dealing with our chattel property. <laughs> but I do agree that they should be married. That where there's less chance of them trying to escape and run away, either one of them. But there's no sense in going through all that rigmarole about Christ and the church and stuff. <laughs> of course, I, I do understand. By the way, Brother Smith, isn't this the girl? There's no need to go into all that right now. <laughs> yes, I, I suppose you're right. What is it you have to say? Well, since there's not going to be a Christian wedding and there's no congregation, all I have to do is sign the papers. 
Well, why are the papers necessary? For the purpose of keeping record of everyone in the county. Uh, the census is coming up soon. Oh, and then there'll be a record that they belong to this plantation, right? Uh, yes, and, and especially to you. Well, I've got the paperwork right here. Ethel and I have already signed it as witnesses. Uh, there's nothing yet to uh, have witness. And that's right, but it's just a formality. Under the law of God and the auspice of this church, I pronounce you man and wife. In the name of Jesus our Savior, go in peace. Oh, I almost forgot about your signatures here on the paper. Oh, that's all right. They're both illiterate. I'll sign them and they can X their names. I suppose that uh, finishes all business here. Oh, there is one more thing. Yes, and uh, what is that? Well, even though I've given permission for this wedding to take place for business purposes, they will not be allowed to live together nor to consummate this union. Now, why would you want to do that? That's for business purposes also. It's going to be a long time before we're going to be needing another letter. I, I mean, know the real reason. It's because at some day down the road of history, when this, 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 these records are uh, examined, we'll be part of the same ancestral tree. That's not why. It's I, all right. Now that Brother Hicks has already blessed this couple and given the benediction, we might as well just go inside. Brother Hicks, our kitchen help us uh, prepare some refreshments for you. I have some business to take care of around back. What, what kind of business is that? Well, it's the usual punishment for being lazy in his work. Now, they're getting ready right now. I don't do the actual whipping. I leave that to another slave, one who's working up some points for marriage. You wouldn't want to be the one doing the whipping. It's almost too bloody and gory to watch. Would you want me to pray over his soul? Oh, but I'm sure his backside could use some balm and gilead. <laughs> seem to have much to say. After all, he did say go in peace. Well, of course. He knew we wouldn't be expected or even allowed to say anything. And how and when are we supposed to go in peace, especially after listening to that whip him? I don't know. I guess we're supposed to find it somewhere out there. Well, maybe way out there. Outside of Georgia. How can we find peace in here? In our hearts? And how about there, our feet still be shackled in slavery chains. And did you notice? They prattled and carried on like we wasn't even there. Them damn papers was more important than we was. Yes, my owner and stepmother was very clear on that. This wedding wasn't even for or about us. And it for business purposes that we not live together, but mm -hmm. I can live with Ellen, what in the world is you talking about? That don't make no damn sense if we married, but not really. The reason I can live with that is because then we won't be making no babies. Ellen, is you completely deaf? William, if we had babies, what would happen to them? Why we raise them up, our own flesh and blood? And what would they do to our own flesh and blood? They sell. When would they say? Maybe six weeks? Maybe six years? And it's a pretty little thing at age 12, but you know perfectly well. Yeah, I do know. My sister was only 12. And I cannot bear the thought of giving birth to a baby. 
and then having that child belong to somebody else to do whatever they have the mind to for whatever pleases. Don't cry, Ellen, don't cry. You mark my words, we're going to find a way to escape. How are we going to do that? I don't know yet. But we're going to find a way. You know perfectly well that they would send out the slave safe hunters and the bloodhounds no matter how far we go or how long we be gone. And then we'd be put into even worse we got here. You two lovebirds still here? <laughs> Yes, sir. <laughs> well, you've got to disabuse yourselves of being a married couple. Just as my good wife patiently told you just minutes ago. Oh, yes, sir. She was good in telling that. But since we sort of married now, where are we going to live? Well, that doesn't change anything. Where do where you usually stay? Well, no, no, but I stay with oh, the other. Oh, yeah, with the other black bucks. Them that's not married yet. But I was hoping that... Makes no damn mind you, William. You lived as before. But, Daddy! Ellen! Now, I've told you not to call me that in public nor elsewhere. But, but where will I? Oh, stop your sniffling. Now that you're married, you'll have the, the small cabin down by the, down by the creek. I thank you. And I thank you, too. Now, that's enough palavering. <laughs> William, you just remember what I told you. No married relationship. I understand, Master. I sure understand. You better understand. I'm sure you realize that I've got some of your <coughs> your black friends keeping an eye on you and keeping me constantly informed. I know that too. <coughs> Ellen. The latch string is gone, and I've been waiting all day. Come on, girl, is you gonna make me wait out here all night, too? There you are. Been waiting all day just to see you for a little while. Well, it is an intolerable situation, but as long as we love each other, I know there'll come a day. Ellen, we can't just wait for the day to come of its own accord. William, let's sit and talk this over. We done talk this over and over again and again. If we ever get away from this being married one minute and not married the next, we're going to have to find some way. Well, you know there'd be a load of cotton leaving for making on the weekend. I do know that, but how would that Well, help? I might be able to scratch myself. My dear sweet Ellen, we cannot afford to be putting you in such danger. You got a better way for us? I've been thinking. Yeah? I've been doing some thinking. And, well, with you being so light-complected and all, you can pass as white. I know. That's what got me into so much trouble, even when I was just a tail. But instead of that being a problem for you, it might could be a blessing. I've been praying now in two years. Faith without works is dead, Ellen. And there comes a time when the good Lord wants us to make some choices. The situation that slavery never really allows. Look, since we get so little time together in the evenings, I've been making some plans. But first, we got to get a pass to leave for three days at Christmas. Well, it does seem that every Christmas they give us slaves a few passes to visit kinfolk on other plantations for three days. But what plantation will we be visiting? Never you mind. We can make it out that we're visiting your mom. Master being such a good Christian and all. What's being a good Christian got to do with it? Being such a good Christian, he gonna let us go no matter where we going. So nobody need to know what place. The main thing now is to buy ourselves some time. Well, I'm not sure what you're getting at, but I can get a pass, that's for sure. That'd be just fine. Mm. Mm. You know, George outside watching as usual. 
He done proved to be a good friend, but he always remind me about Massa and Benjamin ever since Benjamin become overseer. Well, they never tell me anything, but I listen. You keep right on doing that. In the meantime, I'll be going with Massa to Savannah with that load of cotton. That'll be a good chance for me to see how we can get to Savannah. Well, when do you get back? In about a week, maybe, before I leave, we might can spend some quality time. William, you know we can't be taking no chances. Ain't no chance we get caught. I told you, George, outside watching. That's not the chances I've been talking about. We can't be making no babies. Babies that could be taken. I know, Ellen. I know. About a week later, Ellen was alone and was getting ready for bed. She heard footsteps on the porch, which frightened her considerably. Then she heard a soft knocking on the door. Is it okay? You know it's always okay. <laughs> of course, we see each other out on the field or in the big house. Yeah, but that's never quite enough. The week you've been gone, I was awful nervous something may have happened to you. It could have been that you got in a bad way with Daddy. <laughs> now, nah, Ellen, you know I can keep mass and mollified as long as I bow and scrape and lower my eyes and chuckle with his unfunny ass jokes. <laughs> <laughs> I am sick to my death of living. Hey, 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 hey. Ain't no cause to be talking like that. None, you hear? Especially cause I got a little something in mind. What I mean to say is I'm living like this. Sick and tired of, of sneaking around for a few minutes alone together. Now you tell me exactly what you have in mind. I do you one better. Let me show you what I got in mind. I see what you got in hand, but I'm still not sure what you got in mind. Do you like it? It's okay. It seems a bit small for you. <laughs> mm-hmm. It sure fits you, though. And to what purpose would I want to wear this? <laughs> you do want to get out of here, don't you? So I put on this fancy man's hat? And while everyone is sitting on the porch after Sunday dinner, I just march by them all gazing at me. Now, what you want to go and do that for? Well, how am I supposed to use this hat to help us? And well, another thing, where Ellen, did you get the money for this? Would you let me explain, woman? Well, you certainly got some explaining to do. Where do you want me to start? Now, I don't care where you start. You just make sure you get it all covered. All right, all right. Now, in the first place, I ain't have to get the money. I've been saving the money. What master let me keep my 10% part of my carpenter work? Wait, what, what do you What do you mean by taking money away from our escape hopes? With this kind of frippery. You gonna let me finish or not? Nah? Well, I'll be fair. We both be finished if you don't. You know, Ellen, yet. with your light complected skin, you can pass for being white. I know that. Now, when we take our three day leave of this place, somebody's sure gonna stop us. Two Negroes somewhere. But, a white man, with his black slave, goes wherever the white man wants to go. Seems to me that you to be figuring I'm to be the white man. That's the idea? <laughs> I'm not so sure. Did anybody see you with this bag? No, I ain't well, And another thing, what do you do for money for boats and trains? Well, Ellen, I can well, explain. Well, I suppose we're just supposed to walk or maybe run all the way to Baltimore? Slow down again. Now, I done put away enough money to last us for quite a while. I don't earn a lot, but what I did get, I was able to save. Well, I'll think on it. We can't think too long. 
Because that pass got to be used. Not quite yet. Christmas is still three days off, and as I remember it, we must leave on Christmas Eve. Is that what it says? Well, you know I can't read any more than you can, but I did ask for a Christmas pass. And that was good of you. If it wasn't Christmas time, we certainly would not be given that pass. And that gives us two more days to get everything right. Mm-hmm. I was listening in the kitchen today, and they were saying that they were expecting some mischief afoot. Yeah, I know they expecting some after dark shenanigans, but I'm of a mind to ignore any of that, because this ain't the night for that stuff. Actually, George is outside standing watch. So what if he hears them? We got a special whistle if any danger might be lurking. So what then? Why then I'll run around back, get to the creek, and wade it upstream a bit. How long is George willing to keep watch? He say he stay watch as long as we like. Well, I like forever. And we got forever. But we ain't got forever to do what we come to do tonight. You got your papers? I got my walking around papers, but I always carry in the bib of my overalls. I'll be sure to carry mine when we're away. Yeah, that part's gonna change some. What do you mean that part's gonna change some? About your papers. Once we got everything ready to go, I'll tell Benjamin, because he's overseer for the rest of the winter, that we be gone for the three days. That way won't be no bloodthirsty white man and they hungry hounds chasing us through the night. I already got everything else you're gonna need. Are you sure we're doing right by this? Well, sure as I've been about anything in my life till now. Your Negro body being hidden by your white skin would make it possible to pull off this little play acting. Of course, I knew I could pass for white. Even before Miss Smith got too nervous with me around the other children. I was only 11 then. And she gave me to my own sister. Though she'd only be my half-sister. Shit, that's George's whistle. I gotta get out of here. Well, it must have meant that some slave must have escaped, but... We always fearing for what might could happen. That's no reason for you to be running. We can't be taking no chances at this point. I love you, Ellen. <laughs> Dear Lord above, I pray to God that you keep William safe. My William. William. Sweet William. William, you in here? What is this in this bag here? It, it's just some old clothes wash that I was doing for all Aunt Mildred. You see, she's been off the poly lately. What, what, what did you need William for, huh? Has well, he done something? You know, one of the Dalton slaves has got away. William knows these woods better than anybody. I need his help. Well, he, he, ain't, he ain't in here. It was the next night that Ellen waited for William, two nights before Christmas. Dear Lord above, I've cried so many tears, I fear my brain might be dried up. But my heart be sick with longing, longing for William, longing for freedom. If it be thy will, dear Lord, let me perish from this life of misery. Or if I will not. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I ain't mean to. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see you too. But I ain't mean to interrupt your talking with the Lord. Well, I'm sure the good Lord don't mind at all. And if we be heading ourselves for freedom and glory, then. I'll be dying for trying. Sweet, sweet Ellen, don't even be thinking of dying. Since you got here, dying not be what I be thinking. I hope you're thinking about the glory of freedom. Yes, all last night and all day today. Did he find you last night? He did. You must have told him I was frog gigging. Now what makes you think I'd say that? <laughs> Just get this. He comes up to me and says, 
Boy, how you out here hunting frogs with your bare hands? I says, yeah, sir. I comes down here and forgets all about the frog gig so I can grab them for eels in the creek banks. Now laughs my little laugh. <laughs> now bow and scrape and do the whole show for him. Well, now you surely didn't do that little dance show for him, did you? Of <laughs> course I did. <laughs> Had to put him at ease as quick as possible now. <laughs> I was hearing in the kitchen today that that Dalton slave got clean away. And that don't usually happen if... If they go the right way. Why wouldn't they be going the right way? Well, let's just say the right way depends on the right hunter. You mean you. Last night he said that you knew these woods better than anybody. And I do. Now I truly hated to have Master Smith mistrust my judgment. But more important than that trust now was that boy's escape and our pathway to freedom ourselves. Well, you not had a chance to discuss what we started last night and about these clothes for me. That's right. I need to see how they look on you. I still don't understand how dressing in those clothes is going to help. Well, like I already explained, Ellen. If we try to get all the way to Savannah, as two colored slaves, we gon' get caught. But if you traveling as a white man, with me as your black slave, won't be no questions asked. Matter of fact, I saw the very thing this past week. It was a white slave owner traveling by train with his slave. Where they be headed? To Charleston, South Carolina. And that's exactly what we gon' do. How we gonna do that? Wait a minute. You ain't tried on these clothes yet at all, have you? No. I was waiting. We don't need to wait no more. What's the matter with you? Didn't preacher pronounce us man and wife? I know very well, and I long for the day. Well, no need to long no longer. <laughs> William, when we find freedom, then the day will come. Well, what do I do? You can wait. I've been waiting ever since you before we... You can sing. <laughs> you can always sing. Well, what did... The... <laughs> what you want me to sing, then? There is a balm in Gilead to make the wounded whole. There is a balm in Gilead to heal a sin-sick soul. Sometimes I feel discouraged. I think my work's in vain. But then the Holy Spirit revives my soul again. I'm nearly ready. You know, they got a show just like this down in Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, a show like this? Saw a show near the river where a girl come out all dressed up from behind the curtain. When she comes out with the band playing music, she struts around, start taking clothes off, a little out of time at first, then she start throwing them off to a fairly well, till there wasn't now, no... Now, if you're thinking you're going to be seeing a show around here... Sweet baby Jesus, I think it's some possibilities here. <laughs> exactly what kind of possibilities you'll be thinking. Same possibilities ever since Brother Hicks married us up. Even before that. But we got other matters now. William, I'm sorry we've had to live like this, but my faith in the Lord... We got other things to work on now, and that's all it is to it. Actually, even without the full suit, you're going to do just fine. Well, 
Well, if this is the way we gotta go, then we ain't got much time to lose. You think you got everything together to pull off this little prank? I believe everything you're gonna need for the costume is in the bag. I even bought a pair of tinted glasses to hide your pretty woman's eyes. You know, I, I saw those and I wondered. Now, we gonna have to be done tomorrow. Because it's Christmas Eve, and they expect us gone Christmas Day. That's usually when they start getting everything ready for the celebrations. And they won't hardly miss us. It's getting late. You better get going before Benjamin gets tired of watching. <laughs> Pretty sure George is the one watching, but yeah, I hear you. <laughs> Just for tonight, then we be gone. The same evening, their owners met on the front porch of the manor house. I'm concerned about William and Ellen. Why are you so concerned about them? You're more worried about your bastard daughter than you are your own legitimate children. You don't understand my concern. I'm not concerned for her as my daughter. I'm worried about the two of them as my as our property. Actually, I've been quite impressed with her uh, performing her kitchen duties. And I've been happy with William's work too, here and also his carpentering work. <clears throat> you know, our share of the money that he brings in from cabinet making sure makes a big difference in the running of this place. Our share of what he produces? Well, don't we own him? Yes, of course. Don't we provide shelter? Such as it is. And feed him? We do. Well then, why should he keep any part of what he produces? He has no expenses. I mean, after all, we paid good money for this investment. I, I like it. I like it to be uh, something that he can feel safe and comfortable with his situation here. Well, do you think he's completely satisfied? I used to, until a little while ago, and the night that Dalton's slave got away. What does that have to do with William? Well, I went to Mary's cabin, I mean Ellen's cabin, to see if he was there, and she said he hadn't been. Was she lying? I think so. I saw a man's hat on her bed, and while we were talking, I know I saw it when we were talking, though it disappeared. Well, how can a hat just disappear? I don't know. Sometimes I think she might be a conjure woman like her mama. And her mama? Well, if you remember her. Now, I knew she was a conjure woman. How do you think she got me in bed? Don't you dare. <laughs> For all those other slave women conjurers. I sold her off, you know. Of course I know. <clears throat> well, let's get back to that hat. Was it a hat you'd seen him wearing, or...? No, no, it was a real fancy hat. One like me or my friends would wear to church or to the courthouse. You don't suppose Ellen Ben? Oh, no, of course not. But they both bear watching. Well, you know, they got a three-day pass coming up for visiting. Yeah. <laughs> They'll come back from that, though. If they are trying to escape, they wouldn't get very far. They'd have to produce paperwork, and... They wouldn't have it, at least the right one. Well, we'll have to check into that right away as soon as they get back. You and I agree about that. <laughs> but you know, I've got Benjamin that helped me keep an eye on him. And it's funny, he thinks he's working up some points towards his freedom and early release. And when they think that, they'll sell out their mother. Would they auction off their own daughter? <laughs> Come that Christmas in 1848, it was time for their foolhardy attempt to escape. They would be having two traveling bags, a fancy carpeting bag for Mr. Johnson, uh, my grandmama told me that was the name Ellen chose, and a uh, few things wrapped up in an old quilt for William. Uh, 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 uh. I cannot believe I could be married to this man in front of me. <laughs> I can't believe I'd be the man. 
I just hope everybody recognizes me as a man. And not just any man, a plantation and slave owner. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Johnson. Yeah, it'll be Mr. Johnson from now on. Well, then it'll be William Johnson. I'll take your given name. Right? Okay, but what we gonna call me then? Well, what was your papa's name? We always just called him Papa. Of course I did. What's your mama call him? Well, mama called him Rastus, but she once told us his name is you, Rastus. <laughs> well then, Rastus, <clears throat> would you like to take a trip with me? <laughs> yeah, sir. <laughs> oh. But it won't be right for you, Mr. Johnson, being a self-respecting white man, to have such long hair. Oh, you know, I never even thought on that. Well, I got some scissors over here. I can sit right here in this chair and let you do the cut, if that's what you had in mind. That'd be just fine. Now keep in mind, we may be only play acting, we got to play this game as though it was for real, as though our lives depended on it. Well, in truth, our lives do depend on it. Yeah, for the next days and weeks, maybe even months, it'll be the most real thing in our lives. Except for our real love. And if I ain't have that reality, I certainly would not be taking this adventure. Nor would I. Now let's get to it. Girl, you know your hair thicker than weeds. Weed, yeah. I mean it is. No skin white, but you got them black folk nappy naps. <laughs> Well, now, you must start acting like you are my for real slave. Now clean all this up. <laughs> and when I must start showing how obedient you must be, now don't be too surprised now. <laughs> now, Ellen, you know how I bow and scrape for Massa. I'd be happy to do the same for you. And you must start talking with me the way you talk with the other wives. Now, wait a minute. I know you can speak better, and there will come a day. All right, all right. What about you, though? How you gonna talk like white folks? Well, you know very well that although I can't read nor write, I listen to the white folks when they come over to the house, and well, sometimes they even be fancy businessmen and writers. Now, I may not set pen to paper, but I certainly put words to mind. And I especially like the way they sound when they say them right out loud. Well, that makes sense. But it's still one thing I ain't figured out yet. And what would that be? Well, even if we convince guards and slave chasers and sheriffs that you a white man and I'm your slave, it's still one problem. See, I've been with Master Two Savannah many a time, and at train depots and other places, he'd have to sign papers saying everything was in order. How you gonna sign? Now see, I've been thinking on that. So, I went and broke my right arm. What? what? Say what? I, I shouldn't tell it that way. I'm fixing to break it. Well, quit fixing and explain, woman. How can I sign the papers if my arm be broken? Oh, you ain't really... No, no, of course not. And I even cut this nice piece of linen from the linen tablecloth down at the creek. Well, all right, then. <laughs> When Grandma Ellen made that suggestion, Grandpa William helped her devise a sling out of that piece of linen. All right. We got everything we need, besides clothes. Of course, we only wear one outfit at a time. It's time. Do you suppose we're going to have any trouble getting past all the partying at the big house? I believe we'd be okay if we go by the barn. Let's pray. Dear Lord, guide and protect us on our journey. Don't let no bad happen. Hide us from the eyes of the slave chasers. 
and see us safely into the promised land. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Do you suppose someone might be watching? I believe everybody's going to be at that party. Now let's get it. <laughs> Ellen? Ellen? <laughs> Ellen, come now. What's the matter? It must have been a strange picture to see this small white man leaning on and sobbing on the breast of a black slave. Well, I know that we still got miles to go before we find freedom. Not master and slave. And we can live as the Lord intended. As husband and wife. Now it's getting late. We must go set for. You go by the Piney Woods. I'll follow the creek. We meet up at the train depot. The full moon should be enough light to guide us to the sun. Which means this is farewell, old friend. Hopefully, well, welcome back. Thank you. We're getting ready to start our second part of our journey. Now, their journey then became much more complicated and much, much more dangerous. They had managed to leave the plantation and making behind and were able to buy a ticket to Charleston, South Carolina for a brief stop and then on northward. Um, they were at the train loading dock with uh, the other travelers and um, Mr. Cray was standing close by even though they were on their way hopefully to freedom. <sighs> their troubles were just beginning. Oh dear. Oh, 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 Hey, Mr. Craig, I believe I remember him eating dinner at Master's house not so long ago. You remember him? Yeah, I remember him. I just hope he doesn't remember or recognize me. He knew me when I was given to my sister, but it's only a letter then. It's a very fine morning, sir. Sir, I said I will make him here. May I sit? Yes. For a moment, I thought I knew this young gentleman. There's something about him. Well, I have better things to do than attempt to engage in conversation with a deaf mute. <laughs> <laughs> It's about time for me to get our bags ready for the train, Master. Why, yes, Rastus. Thank you for being so helpful. You're a very attentive boy, sir. You had better watch him like a hawk when you get on to the north. Seems all very well here. But he may act quite differently there. I've known several gentlemen who lost their valuable niggers. Among those damn cutthroat abolitionists. <coughs> I would not take a nigga to the north under no consideration. I've had a great deal to do with colors in my time, but I never saw one who ever had his heel upon free soil <coughs> was ever worth a damn. 
Not a stranger. If you had made up your mind to sell at the darky, I'm your man. Just name the prize. If it's not out of the way, I'll pay for them on this train with hard silver dollars. What do you say, stranger? No, I, I do not wish to sell, so I cannot get on well without it. Well, you have to get on well without them if you take them up north. For I tell you, stranger, as a friend, he will do you no good if you take him across the Masons and Dixon's line. Right, he is a keen colored man. I thank you for your advice, sir. Hmm. You pardon me, sir, for saying I think you're very likely to spoil your boy by saying thank you to him. Now I assure you, sir, nothing spoils a nigga so soon as saying thank you. Or oh, if you please to him. The only way to make the nigger toe the mark and keep him in his place is to storm at him like thunder, keep him trembling like a leaf. Don't you see when I speak to my mate, he darts like lightning. Ha <laughs> ha! Then if he didn't, I'd skin him! They be humble as a hound dog. Never dare to run away. Now, you need to listen to what I've been telling you. Do not take that nigger up north. Well, I was told I needed to go north, go to Philadelphia, where the air is better for me. Oh, uh, because for the hell freezes, you ought to go to Hot Springs, Arkansas. <laughs> I was told I could get better medical attention up in Philadelphia. Well, go away damn well, please. <laughs> but you'd be well advised to sell for the deal I offered. I thank you for your free advice, sir, but I do need the boy to take care of my needs, which he does ever so well. But of course, it's your call and it's your life. <laughs> Right. Seems to be bored. So, Godspeed on your continued journey. You too, sir. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to polish boots real good for my man, son. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Say, brother, uh, uh, where you come from? And, and what size you on today with that there little dressed up white man? Oh, I was from Georgia. The side I go into is Philadelphia. What? Philadelphia? Mm hmm. <laughs> Pride of squash? I wish I was going with you. I hear him say there's no stage way up in them quarters. Is that true? I hear saying. <laughs> God almighty! <laughs> There's a party for old Marby. Now, now, when you get there, I hope you stay and never follow that buffer back to these hot quarters no more. Let him be ever so good. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> God bless you, brother. And, and the Lord watch over you. <laughs> and, and, and when you get to the freedom and you sit under your own wine and fig tree, <laughs> don't forget to pray for poor old Pompey. I'll be sure to pray for you, Pompey. Okay. But I still gonna have to polish boots for oh, my ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, if we never meet again, may the Lord look after you and care for your independence. All same to you. <laughs> Can't tell you this thing this song. Do not, do not. Fill the dope. Charleston, 
Ellen and William ran into a problem in the Custom House office. You sure we'd be in the right place? I believe the sign says something about Custom House. How can you be sure what the sign say? There was a fella outside where Karee really told me what the sign say. And I believe that mean looking fella behind the desk may be the very one we have to report to. You stay right behind me. We'll go get two tickets to Wilmington. Yes, sir. Yeah. I would like <clears throat> two tickets to Wilmington for me and my manservant. Boy! Do you belong to this gentleman? Yes, sir. Well, I wish you to register your name, sir, and the uh, name of your slave, and pay a dollar duty on him. Well, as you can see, sir, my right hand is a bit indisposed, or unable to sign the papers. Would you do me the kindness of registering his name for me? Well, I shan't do it. But, sir, I have just explained to you so I must insist that... <coughs> Why, Mr. Tuttle, how good to see you again. Well, I thought Tallston was your destination. Oh, no, Wilmington is my final destination. I was born and reared in the old North State. Well, maybe we can visit on the train to Wilmington. That is, if I can secure a seat. Well, is there a problem here? Perhaps the cost? Why, no, no, nothing like that. This gentleman here will not register my manservant's name for me, even though he can see I, well, I have a bit of a handicap. Yes, could, could I be some help? Why, I suppose if, well, if you could affirm who we really are. Is there some sort of misunderstanding here that I might alleviate? I, I can't allow passengers on board who have not been properly identified. If I allow passengers who do not have authentic papers, uh, why, they could very well could be uh, uh, runaway slaves. Uh, and that would be on my conscience forever. Uh, we've had more and more trouble with uh, these damned abolitionists uh, stealing our property, sometimes from right under our nose. But does this man look like a slave? No, but he won't sign the register to authenticate the Negro. Well, that's, there's a very good reason for that. The result of a, of a recent injury. And then you know them? Oh, well, I know he just came like a book. <laughs> Very well. Check on it. Of course. <laughs> and I will need some transportation too. Is there a problem here? Oh, <laughs> hello, Mr. Graves. Uh, well, there has been some problem of late with uh, slaves escaping. Uh, that's why I have to be real careful about who I allow to uh, sign on board the steamer. Or oh, uh, they could be slaves trying to slip through to those free states of the north. Well, we're only going to Wilmington. And the last that I checked, North Carolina is not a free state. And I said that I would be personally responsible. Now, tell me your name. Johnson. William Johnson. Uh, Mr. Johnson, enslave. And uh, the name of the boy? Oh, why, yes, my, my manservant. Well, I usually just call him Rastus, but his real name is Eurastus. All right. Uh, how do you spell that? Well, I spell, sir. Yeah. How do you spell it? Why, well, just just the usual way. <laughs> <laughs> is that uh, E U R A S T U S? Why, yes, of course, of course. Well, everything we find now, Mr. Johnson. Mr. Johnson, uh, pardon my rudeness, but uh, I have to be real careful these days. Why, yes, of course, so I certainly understand. Uh, now that the uh, the passenger list is complete, uh, what do you say we go next door and have ourselves a, a drink and a good cigar? Why, <clears throat> well, I... Man, sir, I'm sorry for bothering you and this fine gentleman, but I fear I must remind you what oh, Dr. Oh, well, said. yes, yes, Rastus, thank you. You almost forgot what Dr. Baxter had warned me about. Is there something amiss here? Why, it, it's like Rastus say. 
The doctor took me off tobacco and the liquors. As long as this ailment persists. And Lord knows how Master like a good smoke. <laughs> That's all right, Rastus. Day will come. Now, I thank you for your kind offer, sir, and do apologize for my infirmity. Uh, yes, of course. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Johnson. Uh, sir. I would like to apologize again for the transit agent. Uh, I realize it was probably a little bit of sharp shooting there for a while, Mr. Johnson. It, it was no disrespect to you, sir. They make it a point to be very strict here in Charleston. Uh, if they, uh, I've known families that have been detained with their slaves oh. until proper information could be found regarding them. Uh, if they weren't so careful, any damn abolitionist might make off with a lot of them valuable slaves. Well, I, well, I do suppose so. And Lord knows that'd be a damn shame. <laughs> <laughs> From Charleston, they had planned to take a steamship all the way to Philadelphia. However, as ships didn't sail into Philadelphia in the winter, they were forced to continue their journey by rail. After their stop in Wilmington, they then took a train to Richmond and ran increased risk as there were other close passengers. Now come, my dear Rastis. What I hear is slave runners walk along these routes. I know, I know. Ain't it terrible stealing the livestock property from the good Christian families? Next thing you know, we'd be stealing cows and horses. But William, this is not a laughable matter! Before you know it, they'd be auctioning off their own bastard children birthed by their own women slaves. We have come this far, praise the Lord, and I will not have you ruin it with your little fun! Ellen, Ellen. I'm sorry. I just got caught up in the craziness of the situation. There is nothing funny about this whole trip. You know perfectly well. Ellen. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's just we're so close. That's why we gotta be especially careful. I know. I know. What was it you were trying to ask me? All right. Folks want to know about your medical condition. If anybody asks, just tell them I have inflammatory rheumatism. I heard the doctor tell that to my grandmother once, on my father's side. That's a useful ailment. I'll be sure to mention it next time I'm asked. What else do they want to know? Well, they ask all kinds of things about you being married, having children, that sort of thing. I just wish everybody would mind their own business. Mm-hmm. You know. I thought I'd about swallow my tongue when that fella offered you some liquor and a good cigar. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know very well that I've stolen some sips of hooch from the white man when they leave the glasses behind, but I even even held the cigar. The thought of it is absolutely repulsive. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? <laughs> Come, children. <laughs> Do you mind if we share this car with you? Uh, not at all, sir. There's plenty of room. Please have a seat. Oh, I shan't be sitting for a while, but uh, I would appreciate if you would protect my daughters till my return. Why, well, certainly, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> now, Anne, Betty, you be good. Try not to disturb the young gentleman. All right, Papa. I suppose you're Anne and Betty. <coughs> Tell me about yourself. I'm Anne. I'm Betty. How am I to know the difference? Well, I'm Anne, and uh, and my hair's a little lighter than Betty's. Mm -hmm. I'm Betty, and I'm a little bit slimmer than Anne. <laughs> well, now, why don't the two of you come here and have a seat by me? It would be so nice for an injured southern gentleman to have the attention. Of course, I mean the medical attention of two such angels of mercy. <laughs> now, tell me about yourselves. Well, there's not much to tell. 
I've just come home from New York where I earned a teacher certificate to teach in elementary school. <laughs> and you, Betty? Well, since Mama died, I've stayed home and uh, looked after the household and, of course, Papa. Are well, you married? <laughs> Have you been bothering this young gentleman? No, Mr. Right. No. They've just been entertaining an injured southern gent. Well, that is certainly good to hear. One cannot be too careful with the behavior of their children, particularly prior to their proper marriage. And what can one do with grown children? Well, I was just inquiring on that. On that? Well, on their marriage status. Ah. Tell me, Mr. Uh, Johnson. Mr. Johnson. Where are you from? Alabama. Well, your, your manservant, the, uh, the boy who was leaving the car as we entered, that is your manservant, is it not? Yes, sir. Well, now, he told me that you were from Florida. Well, I, I do suppose he would say that. You just can't trust the Negroes to get the back straight. Uh. <laughs> it is true. I bought him at an auction down in Florida, but then took him up to my plantation in Alabama. <laughs> him being so loyal and efficient that I thought it best for him to accompany me on this trip. On mm -hmm. this trip to where, sir? What is your destination? Philadelphia. Oh, you have kin there? Oh, no, sir. I was told I could get better medical attention there. Oh, you do seem very much afflicted, sir. Why, well, but yes, sir. What is the nature of your malady, if I may be permitted to ask? Inflammatory rheumatism, sir. Oh, that is bad, sir. I have sympathy for you. I know from bitter experience what the rheumatism is. Perhaps you might begin to feel better if you'd be allowed to lay down and rest yourself. What? Well, yes, sir. So that, that is a very good suggestion. I'll be. Oh, Papa. He seems to be a very nice gentleman. Hmm. Dear me. I have never felt so much for a gentleman in all my life. Hmm. <laughs> time passed for Ellen as she enjoyed the quiet sleep time. Aww. How Massa doing? <laughs> oh, he seems very much diminished. Oh, yes, yeah, sir. Jasmine is seeking medical attention in Philadelphia. Yes, yeah, sir. You seem very much devoted to him. Won't you be seeking your freedom in Philadelphia? Oh, no, sir. He must treat you uncommonly well. He treat me like family. Hmm. Boy! Yes, yeah, sir. I'll ride here. Well, we must be departing the train soon. It has been a very pleasant journey. We thank you for sharing it with us. Wow, yes. Best of luck in your search for medical attention in Philadelphia. Uh, thank you, sir. Yeah. My grandmother passed down to me a natural recipe for the cure of inflammatory rheumatism. <laughs> wow, thank you, sir. Now, before we leave, I wish to invite you to visit us when you are in our area. Thank you, sir. I will certainly do that. Yes. Oh, yes! Yeah. Oh, we'll pull well, out well, the weather carpet and pull it right out. I will be delighted to see you, sir, as will my daughters. <laughs> Come, girls, it is time to disembark. <laughs> Sounds like they disembarking up the wrong tree. <laughs> I gonna step off the train for a minute, Massa, but I'll be right back. Yes, Rastus, you do that. Go and get some fresh air. <laughs>
no, see, that's my boy. Oh, I beg your pardon, sir. I was sure it was my boy. I never in my life seen two black pigs look more like your boy and my Ned. Oh, sir, I hope your boy will not turn out to be as worthless as mine has been. I treated him just as kind as if he were my own son. Oh, it grieves me so very much, sir, that he, after all I have done for him, he should run off without any cause whatsoever. When did he leave you? Oh, about 18 months ago. Now I haven't seen a hide nor a hair of him ever since. Did he have a wife? No, sir, not when he left. Though he did have one a little while before then. Oh, she was quite unlike him. She was just as good and patient and kind and faithful as anyone would wish to have. Poor thing. She grew so ill that she was unable to do much work. So I thought it best to sell her. Go to New Orleans where the climate is nice and warm. Well, she must have been glad to go south for her help. No, she was not. For niggers never know what is best for them. She took on a great deal about leaving Ned and the baby. But as she was so weakly, I just had to let her go. Was she pretty? Well, yes. Yes, she was. She was quite handsome. And she was much whiter than I am. So she's not going to have any trouble finding another husband. I wish her well. I asked the speculator who bought her to sell her to a good master. Poor thing. Oh, she has my prayers, and I know she prays for me. Okay. Julie was always a good Christian woman, and she used to pray for my soul. In fact, it was through her earliest prayers that I was led to seek salvation and forgiveness for my sins before I was converted at that great camp meeting. As your Julie was such a very good girl and served you so faithfully before she lost her health, don't you think it would have been better to have emancipated her? No, I do not. I have no patience with people who set Negroes at liberty. Worst thing you can do for them. Oh, my poor husband, before he died, wheeled all his Negroes free. But, well, I, myself and my friends knew he was too good a man to have thought of doing such an unkind and foolish thing, had he been in his right mind. So, we had the will altered, as it should have been in the first place. Do you mean, madam, that the will of the slaves free was unjust to yourself or unkind to them? Well, it's decidedly unkind to the third servants themselves. I find it very cruel to set slaves free to shift for themselves when there's so many good masters to take care of them. Oh, I have lost ten of them since my husband died. Just ruinous. If my son, a good Christian minister, and I could have the value of those runaway slaves, well, I think what good we could do. Why, we could send missionaries to the heathens who have never heard of our blessed Redeemer. As your son was such a good Christian minister, it's strange he didn't advise you to let the poor Negroes have their liberty and move north. Not strange at all, sir. My son always knows what's best for the, our slaves. He has always told me that our slaves down here are far better off than the free men up north. In fact, I don't believe that there's any white laboring people that are as well off as our slaves. You are quite mistaken, madam. My mother, before she died, let her slaves go free. 
I was up in Ohio last year and visited some of them. They're doing very well. Well, <laughs> freedom may have gone well for your mama's niggers, but they will never do for mine, and they shall never have it. That is the word with the bark on it. If freedom will not do for your slaves, madam, I have no doubt that your Ned and the other Negroes will find out their mistake and return to their old home. Oh, bless them! If I ever get my hands on them, I will cook their infernal hash and tan their accursed black hides well for them. Hmm. Oh, by the way, that reminds me, I have a few stories to tell you. God, forgive me. The Negroes are going to make me lose all my religion. Next stop, Wilmersburg, Virginia. Oh, dear God. Here. Grandma said it was time for that old lady to get off the train at the next stop. <laughs> <laughs> Ellen and William confronted barrier after barrier. If it wasn't travel officers, it was government offices. When they got to Baltimore, they encountered a government officials who were especially concerned about runaway slaves, but it was necessary for them to go to the government office there. You, uh, wish to see me, sir? Yes. Sir, it is against our rules to allow any person to take a slave out of Baltimore and into Philadelphia without finding out that it is okay for them to go. Why is that? Because, sir, if we should suffer any gentleman to take a slave past here and into Philadelphia, and should the gentleman turn out not to be the slave's proper owner, and the proper master come and prove his slave is safe on this road, well then, we shall have him to pay for. Therefore, we cannot let any slave pass here without receiving security to show and satisfy to us that it is all right. No. I bought tickets in Charleston to take us all the way to Philadelphia. Therefore, you have no right to detain us here. Are you, sir, acquainted with a Mr. Ben Bennett? An attorney here in Baltimore that could attest to your legitimacy and that of your slave? <clears throat> as this gentleman is obviously a slaveholder as well as being invalid, and therefore he should be able to proceed. It would certainly be wrong to detain him any longer. Was this couple on the train from Wilmington? Yes, they were. I believe their ticket was all the way to Philadelphia. Right or not right, you shall be going. Massa? Massa? Uh, <laughs> I'm not really sure what to do. Uh, as the gentleman is unwell, it, it would be unfit to leave him here. Uh, we, we will let the kind gentleman go uh, with, with his slave. Thank you. <laughs> Later, the train car had two men seated who s appeared rather out of their usual environment. Can I see your tickets, please? Willis Hughes, Robert J. Knight. Where are you men from? That 
information isn't required. Is it? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. Uh, uh, it's just that when I finish collecting the tickets and have some free time, I, I like to uh, visit with the travelers. Uh, you know, uh, there are a lot of interesting folks traveling by rail these days. Uh, you know, we folks up north get accused of being unfair. Friendly, particularly to Southerners who have a better image of friendliness. I thought you Southerners would be more friendly like on this trip. How did you know we were Southerners? <laughs> <laughs> the ticket was issued in North Carolina, was it not? And although it's North Carolina, it's still a southern state, which, which is a slaveholding state. Yes, but we're not from North Carolina. We're from Georgia. Now, you idiot, why'd you have to tell him Don't that? Her. Of course you didn't have to tell me that, but you never know what sympathizers you may have up north. What kind of sympathize? About your way of life. Oh, you don't have to be around the bush. I know you're talking about the slave trade. Of course. Uh, but by the time any runaways would get this far above the Mason-Dixon line, they'd be free men, wouldn't they? Not for long. No? You see, because of the difference between the North and the South concerning slavery, Congress is trying to put through a law that would allow Southerners to pursue their escaped slaves wherever in the United States they might be. And if they find them, they bring them back. And if anyone harbors a black bastard, they will be arrested, yeah. fined, yeah. jailed. <laughs> That's fascinating. Uh, it's not a law yet, is it? Well, not, not yet. yet. <laughs> Are you looking for any slave in particular? Looking for a man and woman escaped from Macon, Georgia. What did you tell that for? What you what? Oh, it would be unusual, wouldn't it, for two slaves to be traveling on the railroad? It would. But we've heard that they might be in disguise. Oh, what kind of disguise? <laughs> well, we don't know, but it is a rumor. Mm, of course, this is useful information for someone like myself who sees many travelers every day. But if I were to find and identify such fugitives, will I get a reward? Like, wanted dead or alive, a thousand dollar reward? <laughs> well, it may not be uh, that much, but that's the idea. <sighs> I will certainly keep my eyes open. <laughs> The next morning on the same train, Ellen was in a car sitting alone. William hadn't been seen in quite a while. Have you uh, seen anything of my man servant? No, I haven't. Boy, you seem terribly upset. Well, he's probably just staying away till we reach Philadelphia, for there he'll be able to jump and run. A free man in no, the promised would, land. He would never run away. We have a very special relationship. Well, I fear he may have fallen like Hudson well. But someone may have stolen him to enslave them for himself. He perhaps could have even been killed. Well, sir, I'm much more of an abolitionist than a slave chaser. But I am in dire need to find my man servant. Well, that's quite obvious. But uh, how do you suppose I might assist you in your search when I, I disapprove of slavery in the first place? I talked to a couple of fellows from Georgia. They were rather secretive about their train trip up here. Why was that? They were trying to uncover some tracks, and they were quite diligent about covering up their own tracks. Well, did they uh, 
Did they say what they were looking for? I assume they were looking for escaped slaves. If my guess was right that they were slave chasers. They were asking several passengers if they might have seen two potential runaway slaves, a man and a woman. Well, I, well, I suppose there are plenty of runaways, but a man and a woman, well, that would be a bit far-fetched. <clears throat> if I were to see two such suspects, well, what might I do? Well, that depends. If you were to report them to some parties, eh, they would inform the police, who would then probably turn them over to the slave catchers. Well, I suppose if they made it all the way to Philadelphia, then they, they would be home free, <clears throat> so to speak. Well, why do you say that? Pennsylvania being a free state and all. Oh, they're about to give the slave owner the opportunity to come to a free state and fetch home his chattel. Well, I... After I seek medical attention up in Philadelphia, I was thinking on giving my manservant his freedom. I've been thinking on it a lot lately. Oh, uh, well, as an abolitionist, I say, good for you. But, uh, uh, just don't tell everybody that yet. <laughs> of course not, but, well, I am in desperate need to find him now. I will get some help in finding him. It took some time to find William, but he was asleep in a corner of a car on his carpet bag. My grandmama told me that Ralph, a colored man, found him. <laughs> Boy, wake up. <laughs> Who that? Your master scared half to death about you. Thinks you're taking fresh leave for parts unknown. I ain't never seen a fella so badly scared about losing his slave. Now let me give you some friendly advice. When you get to Philadelphia, you run away and leave that crib when you have your liberty. Oh, no, 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 sir. I can't promise to do that. Why not? Don't you want your liberty? Well, yes, yeah, sir, but I got too good a master to just up and leave him. I've been staying with a man who's an abolitionist. I could recommend you a good boarding house where you will be quite safe. Then if you want to run away, it'd be so easy to do so. Hold on. Take this note. Take this note to any hackney driver, and he'll know how to find it. Uh, you gonna have to tell me what it say. Why, is my writing that bad? It's only recently I learned how to read and write. Oh, no, 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 it's just I can't read at all. You mean you're illiterate? Yes, sir. I can't read a lick no more. Quit doing that, boy. You gotta talk like a slave no more. Now, now, where did you come from when you first started this journey? from Georgia, near Macon. Did you know the James Smith Plantation? I did. I must visit you when you get settled. But take that note to any hacking driver and he'll know how to find it. Don't tell anyone, not even hacking drivers where you're from. Yeah, it's lots you're not telling me right now, but that's okay. Why so secretive around these parts? There's a couple of slave hunters looking for two escaped slaves. A man and a woman from Georgia. I see. Thank you for that information and the caution. Yeah, I know the folks there, so I'll stop by in a few days to see how things are going. That'll be just fine. You can meet my partner while you're at it. That is good information. Next stop, Philadelphia! Ellen and William found each other and began to gather their things to prepare to leave the train. Everyone else had already left. Oh, praise be to God. We're safe. We ain't out of the woods just yet. 
We gotta get to this here boarding house first. I'll get us a hackney. Slaves from Georgia. You idiot! You didn't have to tell where I was from. What? Are they your slaves? Well, it don't matter. So you're slave hunters. Uh, you're in trouble. If you know of their whereabouts and you don't divulge their whereabouts to the proper authorities, and it don't matter where in the United States they're found, because you see. The Fugitive Slave Act, it gives us, um... Gives the owner the, of the escaped slaves the right to seize their property and return it to where it belongs. And it don't matter where in the United States that property is found. If anyone harbors these slaves, they will be severely punished for interfering with the property of another citizen. Is there some kind of reward for supplying pertinent information? Well, there is, but in the meantime, we, uh, we need uh, to... If, if that's the uh, flight hot wall you're talking about, I believe Congress is still wrangling over that. It's up for a vote very uh, soon. But in the meantime, do we need a room? Well, let's see what we have here. Um, I'm sorry, I've just rented the last room to a couple. An odd-looking couple? The woman, she's lightly complected. <coughs> um, no, uh, a couple of men. A man in his black uh, manso. Uh, well, if we want to leave this contact information for the U.S. Marshal who's helping us in this case. Yes, yes, of course. Well, good luck in your search, your godly mission. <laughs> <laughs> Ellen and William had gone to their room. Grandma said that they felt they had finally arrived to safety. Made it. <laughs> What's the matter? Oh, oh, sorry, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that, William? 
Yeah, I saw you just hit a big rat and then apologize to her. What's up with that? <laughs> <laughs> and could I? Could you join us for tea? There's someone here very anxious to meet you. Why? Well, just calls. Just give us a minute to change clothes. Wonderful. You don't suppose it's the slave runners that want to meet us, do you? He said someone, not someone. Yes. Of course. How silly of me. We should still be careful, though. Yes. <laughs> I still think it's a little small for you, but I'm just glad I don't gotta wear it anymore. Yeah, it seems to be a lot of things we can start putting behind us now. Well, not quite yet. There's still quite a few things we need to go over or around. Or under, or through. Here, help me with this. <laughs> well, I think it looks just fine. Especially if I ain't got to wear those damn overalls no more. <laughs> now, what do you say we go and meet these kind folk in our real person? Cool. Grandma said it was time had come for them to show their true persons. But it didn't go well at first when they met the landlord. Um, they still were suspicious that the slave hunters were close by. It's something I'd like to explain to y'all. Uh, could I speak to your young master? Well, that's just it. I'd like you to meet my wife, Ellen Craft. Uh, pleased to meet you. No, no, I mean the young fellow who came in with you a while ago. Well, that's just it, you see. I'll be that name. Oh, no, you can't no. be. <laughs> we had to take on these disguises, you see. Pretend that I was a slaveholder. Because she's so light skinned. Traveling with his man This was necessary if we was ever to escape. Uh, could you uh, please sit down for a moment? Uh, while I clear up a matter with my wife, she's pouring out some lovely tea for both of you. <laughs> that was so nice of you to, to greet us this way. I really didn't expect to be treated so well once we got to freedom. I've never been so happy in my whole life. The tea this good, I can see why. <laughs> Darling, this is the beginning of the rest of our lives. Henry Gilly, what in the world are you thinking? But Helen, love, don't you see? I see that you have become a cold-blooded money grubber. With all our debts piling up. Maybe we should go back to our room. No, no, no. Uh, that won't be necessary. Uh, uh, does your room suit you? Why, well, yes. Uh, our room's just fine. Now that we'd be safe here in Philadelphia. Only in appearance. Um, are you aware that anyone might have been following you? 
We had heard that two gentlemen come up from Georgia to take us runaways to the U.S. Marshal and take us back to Georgia. We knew we was the slaves they was looking for. Well, you'll be safe here at least for a little while. But you must stay by the house. In fact, it might be best if you stay in the house so they won't get a chance to see you. Are they close by? Well, um, uh, as a matter of fact, <laughs> we've just met them. At least we think we've met them. Oh, don't be an idiot, Henry. <laughs> <laughs> you rent a room to two men from Georgia who are looking for escaped slaves just after we rent the room to these people? That's a ridiculous thing. Where did you see And them? when did you? Uh, just now. Right after you registered and went to your room. Oh, William, we've come this far only to lose it all now. We're married, we're not Eddie, married, we're free, Eddie, we're not Eddie. free. I know it looks bad and feels even worse, but I'm sure these good people will protect us until we can find a way out of this predicament. How are we going to do that? We've got no place to go. Uh, we, my husband, had a chance to make some money off of the reward for your capture. Now, I didn't actually intend... Well, it's difficult to decipher what you actually intended, isn't it? <laughs> well, to be perfectly honest... That's the key word now, <laughs> perfectly. Well, I, I must admit... How much they say the reward is? Well, they wouldn't quote an exact amount, but assured me it would be quite substantial. And my gullible husband... Oh, William, I'm scared to death. Well, we'd be better running back and facing our punishment. All this running and hiding and tears of my nose and it clouds my mind. Don't fret, Ellen. Please don't fret. We're going to be together no matter what happens to us. Oh, we, my, uh, my wife and I, haven't been in this country very long. We have family and friends back in England. Could we help in purchasing passage on a, a ship to England? Well, we got plenty of money, but we will need some help finding the way. I'll be taking the train to Boston next week, just before our ship will be sailing to England. Could we? Absolutely. And um, while we wait for departure, you, dear, uh, can join me in the kitchen. And perhaps uh, teach me to make some of those Georgia dishes. But please, stay in the house. I suppose the parlor here ain't completely safe. Oh, certain. Uh, good people are in and out of here all the time. Uh, there's a back way between your room and the kitchen. Um, my Henry's a good man. He gets a little anxious sometimes, but when the tale is told, he'll do the right thing. Thank you. William, and I know that soon we'll find for you. That we will. They celebrated their plans privately with their new friends. Even though there were still some obstacles to overcome, many years later, after living in England and learning to read and write, Grandma Ellen and Grandpa William returned to America and even to Georgia with their five children and their freedom. There they even wrote their own book about their truth and their path to freedom. Their shared yearning for freedom persists with other folks into the 20th century. And today, it continues.